from smartphones to cars, home appliances to factories, IoT is connecting more and more devices to the internet. But what exactly makes up an IoT system? Welcome to IoT Frontier. My name is Hariharnath and in this video, we'll take a closer look at the different components and building blocks of IoT that makes it all possible. Before we get started, please support this channel by hitting the subscribe button. Let's get into the presentation. Under the agenda, we'll be discussing building blocks of IoT and components of IoT. So in the building blocks, we'll uh, look into the what are the various building blocks. First one is about the sensors and actuators, gateway devices, communication protocols, application protocols, cloud platforms, user application and analytics. So in the next slide, we'll be talking in depth about each of them. So under the components, let's first get into the sensors and actuate. So what are sensors? Sensors are devices that are basically uh, used to detect events or changes in its environment. So uh, in everyday scenario, we come across various sensors. For example, here we can see the fire alarm system where the fire detection sensors and the temperature sensors are used. And in our mobile phone, we generally use mobile phones for playing games and multiple things. And uh, the accelerometers come into picture over there to detect the orientation of your mobile phone. And there are certain examples I'll be showing you. So in these examples, these are the general IoT uh, sensors. On the left hand side, you can look into the LDR sensors which detects the intensity of light. This is the air quality gas sensor. It can detect ammonia, sulfur, benzene and other harmful gases in our environment. Let's get into the actuators now. So actuators are nothing but uh, whenever we have some sensing happen and we, if you want to act upon it, for example, in the previous sensors, we have looked into fire alarm sensor. Whenever fire alarm happened, and if you want to turn on the water sprinklers and uh, actuators comes into picture. So actuators are those that will make the operation of working uh, this water sprinklers. And for example, everyday actuator examples we can look into is grocery store door. So this is whenever we walk into the grocery store, the doors automatically gets opened and actuators are the ones that makes it possible. And we have liquid valve actuator. This is also commonly used, for example, if you take irrigation, so where uh, if you want to turn on or off the water flow, so liquid valve actuators will be used. And get, well, let's get into the development boards. So development boards are the heart of IoT system. So those are the things that will be talking to the sensors and sending the data to the cloud. So these are the, uh, currently we'll be discussing some of the development boards for the developers who can do the rapid prototyping. So rapid prototyping uh, is nothing but creating or generating a POCs very fast. And uh, so these are, there are certain development boards such as microcontroller based, SOC systems on a chip, single board computers, which has capability like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So uh, we are going to look into uh, the two such examples. One is Arduino. It's an open, open software and open hardware system. It's a microcontroller based system. And here you can look into the details of what exactly is this Arduino. Here it is having Atmega 328 microcontroller and we have uh, analog pins, digital pins. These, for, these are for input and output. And we have power supply pin, USB plug. So these all will be used such that uh, to make our IoT systems possible. Let's get into the Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi is one more, more powerful and uh, very small uh, system. So this is a low cost credit, size, credit card sized computer. 
it can run on any operating system such as debian based raspbian android windows 10 iot core etc so it it is having multiple uh, protocols working as well for example you have wireless bluetooth 5.0 and also wi-fi is available we have two usb it can also be connected with the ethernet and we have usb c this is the example of raspberry pi 4 model b i'm talking about so there are other models as well older and based on our pricing we can choose them coming to iot protocols iot protocols are formal standards and policies comprised of rules procedures and formats that define communication between two or more devices over a network so the simple so uh, definition for protocols are like we have two uh, devices and we have a cloud so in between we have a network so in the network we have to uh, define certain standards so that it can communicate with each other so that is, those are called protocols so the connectivity and transport protocols these are the some of the examples that we have taken and here the important things we can look into is bluetooth as well as bluetooth low energy so these uh, work under the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz and the range will be uh, nearly 300 feet the power usage is low as well as cost is also low uh, devices within this 300 feet so we'll be using this bluetooth next thing we important would be lora so lora is used for such uh, scenarios where we want to communicate uh, for the larger distance and with low data rate this will cover one to three miles and it will be having the data rate will be having less than 50 kbps one more uh, popular we'll see is wi-fi uh, the only uh, the disadvantage of wi-fi is the power usage so in some in some scenarios iot devices will be powered with battery so at this scenario we cannot use wi-fi because it consumes power very high zigbee and z-wave are the two technologies or protocols that we can use for smart home so this uh, will be having the range of 300 feet this will be having z-wave will be having 100 feet and both power consumption is very low and the cost is the medium let's get into the application layer protocol see application layer protocols comes into picture in the application layer where we have uh, in general we have http https etc but in iot scenarios we cannot use those because those are having high headers and uh, very energy not very any energy efficient the first one we'll be talking about is mqtt so it is a lightweight protocol that works on pub sub mechanism and we'll be going in depth of these protocols in upcoming videos so right now we'll be talking only the basics of these so amqp is advanced message queuing protocol so it's an open standard so for passing business messages between applications this is more reliable uh, compared to mqtt and we have coap coap is constrained application protocol so that is a specialized web transfer protocol uh, so it will be used for constrained nodes constrained node means which will be having less resources and power and we have web sockets so web socket is a full duplex single socket connection where we can pass the messages between server and client this web socket is very much useful in a certain scenarios where in particular organizations will not be having uh, open will not be having many pro protocols or codes open for using these above protocols we'll be having a uh, firewall rules where only the http and https ports like 80 and 443 will be allowed so in this scenario web socket is very useful let's talk about the iot cloud platform so what is iot cloud platform so iot cloud platform uh, comes into picture when we have the we have gathered the data and we have to process it as well as showcase it in the various dashboards or analyze the data so this iot cl cloud platform will be used to store process as well as analyze in the cloud platform 
the basic cloud platforms that we have. So these are the most popular uh, Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud. There are uh, other platforms as well, but these are the more powerful and standard. Let's talk about the dashboards. So in the dashboards, uh, in the yellow color, we can see the dashboard of a smart home system. So here we can see the temperature and the dial to change the temperature as well. And on the right hand side, in the green color, we can see the humidity of the, our home and we can look into the current as well as the old percentage of humidity. Here we can look into the sophisticated connected car dashboard. In this dashboard, we can look into uh, where we can control the car as well as we can look into the we can look into what are the alerts it is providing and whether uh, the car is unlocked or locked. So we can also look into the cameras, the start engine. We have a uh, option to do, see the performance, location, and trip history. So this is one of the best example for IoT. Let's look into the IoT analytics. So this is the Gartner four levels of maturity model. And here in the x-axis, you can look into the difficulty. On the y-axis, you can look into the value. So uh, based on the uh, increasing level of difficulty, we can look the advanced analytics being taken. The first basic level that is descriptive analytics. It just describes what has happened. Next one is diagnostic analytics. It describes why did it happen actually. So it can diagnose that. Next thing is the predictive analytics. So predictive analytics will say what will happen in the future. So this is most important in uh, predictive maintenance of ma in the manufacturing sector. For example, the mission uh, based on the mission data, and we can look into the data and find out how frequently the mission needs a maintenance and at what time it needs so that we can do preventive maintenance. Fourth one is about the prescriptive analytics. So it will define what we can do to make it happen. So that is more of a prescription to do it. Together, these components make it possible for devices to gather the data, process the data, communicate with each other, and to be monitored and controlled remotely. Understanding these uh, building blocks of IoT is very crucial for anyone looking to create a new IoT system or understand the existing one. In the upcoming video, we'll discuss the architecture of IoT systems. Before we close, if this video was informative, please like the video and hit that subscribe button to stay updated on new videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.